Just because this is the last night, people out there are walking off with everything that isn't nailed down. What happened to respect for property around here? Hey, Ralph, what are you doing here? Packing up the chalk so we can turn it back in. Ooh, 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 I could use that for my classroom. <laughs> been talking about closing down the community center because of a lack of funds. But you'd think that when they did, they'd give us more than three days' notice. Yeah. I feel like I'm being thrown out on the streets. I hate that. And don't ever let Kirk take you backstage to meet his good buddy, Vanilla Ice. <laughs> you think we feel bad. Think of how Louise must feel. She tried everything she could to keep this place open. Petitions, surveys, letters. Oh, uh... she even wrote to the city to try to get the center declared a historical landmark. After the war, the Marines tried to do that to the backseat of my Jeep. <laughs> yeah, whatever happened to that landmark thing? Well, it got as far as Truman. Mrs. Then... Phil. <laughs> There's nothing to do now except uh, decide where we're going to hold our meetings from now on. Well, why don't we take turns using each other's homes? But if you want, we can hold all the meetings at my place. Oh, you think Molly's going to want all of us over there every week? Hey, hey, hey. I'm the man of the house. I make the rules. If you want to have the meeting at my place every Friday night, then that's the way it's going to be, whether Molly likes it or not. You know, Friday's a weekend. Maybe we should change the meetings to Thursday. Uh, no, we gotta keep it Friday. That's Molly's bowling night. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, oh, fellow one-to-one -one club uh, members. Kirk, Kirk, uh, we're gonna be meeting each in each other's houses from now on, so uh, if we get in a bind, can we use your place? You do have a place, don't you? <laughs> of course I got a place, but I might be moving to Fifth Avenue once my pants take off. <laughs> What, uh, what, what are you talking about? Feast your eyes on my new line of jeans. K-Buns! <laughs> yeah, go ahead and laugh. But as soon as I get financing, you're gonna see these babies in every store in America. <laughs> Trust me, Red, you'd be as thrilled to get into a pair of my jeans as I would be to get into yours. <laughs> Trust me, Kirk. You'd have a better chance of getting into the Taj Mahal with a dead cow under your arm. <laughs> hey, Kirk, what do you know about designing clothes? You barely know how to wear them. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll have you know that I happen to be responsible for developing, as a favor to a friend, the marketing strategy for the hottest line of clothing in stores today. Uh, no kidding? What line of clothing is that? <clears throat> Guess. Calvin Klein? No, Ralph. Guess. Bugle Boy? <laughs> no, Ralphie. The name of the line of clothing is Guess. Oh. Forget it, Tom. You guess. I'm not in the mood for this. God, I'm going to miss this place. This is where I got my life back together again after my divorce. Yeah, me too. Well, here in Bloomingdale's. <laughs> Long face is oh, I know what it is. Silly me. <laughs> You're all in the proverbial dumps because the community center's closing tonight. Well, I'll fix that. Louise, what, what are you doing? Oh, I know what you're thinking, Mary Beth. I swear, I do believe that poor woman has had one too many mint juleps. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking, Kirk. I wasn't thinking anything. Precisely. Louise, I don't get it. What's there to celebrate about tonight? Well, John, some 
times when things seem darkest, they have a way of changing for the better. Take my childhood friend Agnes, for example. When she was 19, she entered a beauty contest to select Miss Chichester. Agnes was leading the competition until the final day when disaster struck. The strap on her swimsuit snapped and left her topless in front of the judges. <laughs> Agnes ran from the stage and withdrew from the Miss Chichester contest. So the girl in second place was declared the winner. Oh, the poor thing. Not at all. The next day, one of the judges called Agnes and proposed to her. So you see, everything worked out splendidly. Agnes became a wife and I became Miss Chichester. <laughs> So, the reason we're celebrating tonight, because I, Louise Mercer, am going to personally see to it that the Rego Park Community Centre does not close down. And how am I going to do that, I hear you? I am going to obtain the $500,000 that we need to keep it open. Oh, no, we're in the you're really serious about this, aren't you? I certainly am. Well, I'm off to a very important meeting with two friends of mine who have the power, the resources, and the will to save these hallowed halls. Ralph, would you be a dear and help me get a taxi? Perhaps if the driver sees your badge, he'll think you're a policeman and stop. Imp impersonate a cop? <sighs> All right, Louise, I just hope I can pull it off. <laughs> dollars is a lot of money. Who are these people? I'll yeah. explain everything later when we meet at Clancy's. Now, put on your party hats and put those coffee cups back where they belong, because the one-to-one -one club will be meeting at the community center for years to come, thanks to me. For she's a jolly good lady, for she's a jolly good lady. I can't hear you. For she's a jolly good lady. I admire women who take charge. You admire women who take cash. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello. Yeah. My name is Florence Kellum. Is Louise here? Oh, you just missed her. Yeah. Oh, darn. I just stopped by to give Louise my phone number so we can keep in touch now that the center's closing. Could you give this to her for me? Yeah, sure. Thank you. I love Louise. She was so helpful to me when we were in Meadowbrook together. Me uh, uh, Meadowbrook? Meadowbrook? Isn't that that psychiatric hospital that they advertise on TV? Yeah. I'm sure she's told you all about it. About what? Uh-oh. Uh -huh. Forget what I just said. Forget you ever saw me. Uh, I was never here. Did I hear right? Did she say that Louise was in a mental hospital? Well, it was nothing serious. Louise just had a little problem. How do you know? Because she told me. Well, she did. Well, why would she tell you and not the rest of us? Well, Louise and I are very close. Louise and I are close, too. Mary Beth, she let me see her without makeup. <laughs> Say no more. How do you like that? Our group leader was a foot soldier in the Lone Platoon. <laughs> oh, shut up, Kirk. You know, besides, it's none of your business. Yeah, I think it is our business. I mean, Louise is our friend, too. Now, tell me exactly what happened. Tell us all. Well, okay, it, uh... It was right after her marriage broke up. Her husband left her, and, and Louise had a hard time coping with it. Poor thing. She must have been really down. Oh, no, just the opposite. She was up. She became manic. She felt like she could accomplish anything. She was this ball of energy. In other words, just like the Louise we saw five minutes ago. Oh, no. 
no, this was different. Now, she was way over the edge. She had this big plan to save her marriage. She went to the British Embassy to get help from her best friend, the Queen of England. <laughs> wow, what? the Queen of England? <laughs> and when the Embassy refused to let Louise in, she had to admit it was all a delusion. So she crashed, went into this deep depression, and that's when she checked herself into Meadowbrook. I wonder if this could be happening again. Oh, oh, come on. No, think about it. She lost her husband, so she went to get help from her best friend, the Queen of England. Now she's losing the community center, so she's going to get help from mysterious millionaires. Sounds like all Louise is on the road to another Meadowbrook moment. <laughs> oh, will you people stop it? Now, what happened to Louise happened a long time ago. She doesn't have delusions anymore. If Louise says she's getting a half a million dollars from some friends, I believe her. Hey, everybody, guess what? Louise told me who those people are who are going to give her the money. Who? Her good friends, Mishka the Munchkin and Natasha the Tattooed Lady. <laughs> Munchkins, tattooed ladies. Maybe we should go and look for Louise. How? We don't even know where she went. I can't believe she's going through this again. I'm going to go call her house and see if her babysitter's heard from her. Mm. Maybe you people are surprised about Louise, but not me. Personally, I always suspected her clutch was slipping. <laughs> Although, come to think of it, there was that time when she came in looking like Little Red Riding Hood. Hurry, I'm late, everybody. <clears throat> Shall we begin? Well? <laughs> that proves it. What normal person would have a hairdo like that? Yeah, what about that night she went totally berserk on me for no good reason? Kirk, ever since you've come to this group, you've been a constant source of discontent and disruption. You're an offensive, self-centered, pig-headed bore from the top of your head down to the tips of your ugly shoes. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Nobody, but nobody, yeah. talks that way about my shoes. <laughs> I still have nightmares about that night. Yeah, well, you're not the only one that she flipped out on. What about that time she got all bent out of shape just because I lost her baby? <laughs> You're not making sense. You've got to get a hold of yourself. Now. Tell me what you think of my Louise, Louise, loosen your fingers. Loosen your fingers. No one with Lori Murphy. Louise, stop. It's funny how someone can be going to pieces right in front of you and you never even notice. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, her babysitter hasn't heard from her. Yeah, well, what relax, relax, do? relax, relax, Kate. We just have to think positive thoughts. John's right. I just hope on the way to meet the tattooed lady in the munchkin, she doesn't get mugged by the tin man. <laughs> He just called from his plane. He's so sorry, but he got delayed. Oh, dear. But he said not to worry. He has you check with him. Just let me know where you will be tonight, and uh, he will bring it to you. God bless both of you. Half a million times over, you were my last hope. Thank you, Louise. And it's the least we can do. You brought us into the community center, and if it weren't for the English courses Mishka took, my little munchkin would never have become the success he is today, and we'd still be struggling with this 
filthy, stinking circus. Do you have time for some tea? Oh, a spot would be delightful. Oh, I great. can't get over how good you look. Oh, <laughs> well, can I keep a secret? I just had my flags lifted. <laughs> can't make it to the party. Party? What party? Didn't you hear? Louise is getting a guy to donate a cool half a million to save this place. So a bunch of people from the center are gonna go over to Clancy's bar, have a couple drinks, and watch Louise present the check to Councilman Riley. Wait a minute. How is she gonna get Councilman Riley to come down to Clancy's? That's easy. The hard part is getting that sucker to leave. <laughs> oh, no. Now she's inviting city officials. We better go to Clancy. She's gonna need us. Yeah. yeah. We better hurry. Right now, Louise could be giving new meaning to the term happy hour. Oh. And will you call me later and tell me what happens? Miss Filbert, you can't come with us? Well, it's getting kind of late. Uh, I'm just gonna take my hat and, and my noisemaker and go home. <laughs> okay, big guy, let's go. <laughs> Especially you, Councilman Riley. So just enjoy yourself, because any moment now, Mishka will be here with a check for $500,000. I could be wrong, but I think we just might be a little too late. Looks, looks like it's time for Plan B. Plan B? What's Plan B? Simple. You go over there and grab Louise while I created the version by grabbing that blonde over there. Since we have a little time, why don't I tell you a little bit about our two benefactors? Mishka the Munchkin and Natasha the Tattooed Lady came to New York as members of the Moscow Circus. John, do something. They fell in love with America and decided to defect. They escaped by hiding in a bear costume. <laughs> Fortunately, they thought ahead, and Natasha had a map of the New York subway system tattooed on her inner thigh. <laughs> uh, will you excuse us? That was beautiful, wasn't it? That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. What are you doing? I was in the middle of a very moving story. Yes, I know. I always say, keep them wanting more. <laughs> Louise, I really think we should go. Kate, you can go home if you want to. I'm not leaving till Mishka gets here with the check. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll just powder my nose. Uh, I'll go with her. Yeah, good idea. Oh, oh, John, would you keep an eye out for Mishka? You'll know him when you see him. He's only about this tall. This tall? Right, yes, got it. <laughs> boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Uh, listen, I, um, uh, can you excuse me? Can I have your attention, please? Can I have your attention? Can I <coughs> <coughs> I'd like to make an announcement, please. Yo, people, put a pretzel in it. Uh, I just received some bad news. Uh, it seems that despite uh, Louise Mercer's courageous efforts, the gentleman who was going to donate the money has changed his mind. So, uh, yeah, regretfully, I, I have to suggest that you go back to the center and pack up your things before they put a lock on the door. OK, I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, bye. Yeah. Hey, uh, shouldn't y'all be going too? Your group might need your help. Group? We're fraternity. Yeah. Oh, well, didn't you know? It's free beer night down at Tintori. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah! Just wait until you meet Mish. <clears throat> Why did everybody leave? Well, uh, they, they, they left because, uh, um, uh, well, they're all gone because uh, I, I, I had to tell them the truth, Louise. What truth? The truth, Louise. Louise that, that no one is going to save the community center. Well, that's ridiculous. I've got to get to the no, council. No, 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 it's, Louise, it's Louise, okay, Louise. Louise. I really think we should take you home. I can't go home. Oh, don't okay? worry. We'll take turns staying with you round the clock till you feel better. Absolutely. What are you talking about? We know about the time you spent at Meadowbrook. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Well, your friend Florence Kellum stopped by after you left. And 
I told him the rest. Yeah, uh, we know all about the Queen of England. And Mishka the Munchkin. Not to mention his tattooed ball and chain. <laughs> so that's it. You all think I'm having some sort of manic delusion. Well, some friends you are. No, no, we we are. Right. I never told you about my stay in Meadowbrook. You think just because I had an emotional problem and, and spent a short time in a psychiatric hospital that I'm crazy? That pretty much sums it up. <laughs> Come, 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 come yourself. <laughs> we, we all care about you, Louise. You're just gonna have to face... Look, look, Louise. For your own good, you're gonna have to face reality. Louise, please. Look, Louise, please, please, understand. There is no millionaire munchkin. John? Kirk, John? please, let me finish, let me finish. Louise, look, you're just gonna have to deal with this, Louise. Look, in the past two and a half years, the one-to-one -one club, thanks to you, has made a very big difference in each and every one of our lives. It can continue to make a difference. Or maybe we'll have to get together in each other's homes once in a while, or maybe we'll find another place to hold our meetings. You understand? Uh, please, Kirk, please. <coughs> Look, Louise, it's time to leave Oz and come back to Kansas. <laughs> because no matter how hard you wish or how many times you click your heels together, there's just no way a munchkin's gonna walk in here and hand you a check for a half a million dollars. <laughs> Kirk, will you please? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were somebody else. <laughs> Hi, Louise. Hello, Mishka. Here is your check. Thank you. My pleasure, dear. Well, John? Uh, well, uh, Louise? Uh, you know what they say. This is no place like home. <laughs> Next, Sam leaps into the life of Future Boy, a 50s TV superhero on an all-new Quantum Leap. And Friday night, it's a new night for action at a new time. This is Fred Dreyer. Join me for Hunter Friday nights at 9, 8 Central. Followed by Dark Shadows at its new time, 10, 9 Central, Friday night, only on NBC.